Why do you always go weird in front of the camera? Say hi everyone. Hi. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Weird times, weird times we're living in at the moment. Um, I've been thinking over the past couple of days, you know, how best to survive this period. And I have to say, myself and Andy, we're in a very privileged position in that we work from home anyway, and we're quite isolated anyway. So for us, it isn't as big a change as if, say, I don't know, like you worked in a nine to five job and you were suddenly told to work from home and not see anyone. That would probably feel quite uh, different for you. But for us, it is pretty much the Monday to Thursday everyday norm. Um, the only thing that I'm finding a bit challenging at the moment is work seems to have just completely dried up, events are being cancelled. On an average week, you know, I might get a couple of jobs come in, something that I need to work on, and also have invites to events and be going to restaurants and stuff like that, and that's just not happening now. So everything's gone very quiet on the emails. Um, I've been twiddling my thumbs a little bit, thinking, okay, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get through this? And then yesterday I kind of shifted and was thinking, okay, this is like probably never gonna happen again, hopefully. Um, <laughs> our parents are potentially in quarantine for like 12 weeks or something. So I just started thinking, okay, how am I gonna make a positive out of this how can I come out of this 12 16 weeks a better person maybe <laughs> so it's an ideal time to like really focus on fitness eating healthy getting into really good daily routines um, obviously we're going to be doing much more at home but I guess on an average day we we get up we're not massively early risers we we try to be at our desks by about half nine we will then probably spend the morning doing emails and work and then at about one o'clock we generally take our dogs out so that is the plan at the moment um a couple of my neighbors have been told to work from home and they're keen to you know stay active and do some exercise so we've agreed um starting from today that we're going to try and do group walks but small groups and not obviously in contact with each other. We're gonna be like a couple of meters apart from each other. We're all well at the moment. And I think that will be really good for us because not only will it give us that feeling of connection, like we're still seeing other people, albeit from a slight distance and having an opportunity for conversation, but also we're gonna be getting our exercise, the sun shining, we're gonna be getting our vitamin D. We are hopefully, you know, a dog walk perks me up anyway on the worst of days. So I think, Having a dog and that ability to go out for a walk is really important if you can do that at the moment. We're definitely still gonna do that. We obviously live somewhere quite rural. If I was in a city, I would probably be more cautious about going out for walks if there's gonna be loads of people about, but I think everywhere is probably gonna be really quiet at the moment. But we literally have a rural country lane on our doorstep, so we're quite lucky. Rarely do we ever see anyone on a dog walk anyway. So that's the plan. We're gonna try and stick to our usual routine, but for me, my office-based stuff has gone very quiet. So I woke up this morning and I thought, you know, this is the sort of thing that I'll probably look back on and be like, I wish I'd documented it. I wish I'd had sort of footage from what we was doing then and look back on and think, God, that was a really strange time. So I woke up this morning and thought, I'm gonna start doing some daily vlogs. Um, I hope I'm gonna do it every day, but I might not. I know for me personally that watching people's daily vlogs or regular videos on YouTube, it helps, it lifts me up a little bit. It helps me to feel a little bit more connected. And we've actually been watching um, David Abel's vlogs, uh, the guy that was quarantined on the Japanese cruise ship. Um, We've been watching his videos for the past few weeks and it's actually just been really nice to know that he's gonna upload a video every day and he's not really talking about anything major. Obviously it's been interesting because they had the virus and they were in quarantine, um, but more recently his videos were just kind of chit-chatty, just checking in with people and I thought, do you know what? That's just the sort of thing that I'm gonna do. Some days we might not do anything, but I was thinking even if I show you the chickens and the dogs and the cats and just what we're eating and just checking in, say, hi, how are you? At least it helps me feel a bit more connected. 
it gives me something to do in that I've got to get up every day and edit a video for that afternoon. And it will also give us a little opportunity for our family and friends to feel a little bit more connected to us because, you know, I'm not seeing my parents. My mum um, is self-isolating. She lives two and a half hours away. This weekend we have Mother's Day. Mother's Day is basically cancelled. Um, Andy's parents are self-isolating. We're obviously really conscious about not wanting to pass anything on to them um so a lot of stuff's been cancelled i don't know really when i'll be seeing my family next um so hopefully these daily videos will just be a little a little nice check-in for them to <laughs> snore in chihuahua as always um a little nice check-in for them to just see you know that we're okay what we're doing how we're surviving every day basically you are so noisy Yes, you are. And you're very sleepy as well. The dogs are so sleepy in the morning, so they don't want to get up and do anything. So that's the plan. Um, today's video is probably going to be a little bit longer because obviously I need to talk about this. Um, I need to talk about what's happening. We've also got a couple of things on the agenda today. We do need to get to the supermarket. We've not been panic buying by any means. Um, because we're around a lot, we tend to do that really naughty thing of pop into the supermarket most days to get what we need and want. So for us, it's a bit of a shift in change in that. I usually order on Ocado, but they've been completely, their app is completely down. I've not managed to do anything on Ocado, but I have managed to order a food shop on Tesco. So I've done a big one on there. Not really, not bulk buying or anything, but just a big solid weekly shop. Um, but the earliest delivery I could get for that was the 28th of March. So not this weekend, next weekend. So between now and then, we are gonna have to intermittently pop out and get some bits. Now, what we've realized is, is that actually some of the smaller shops, like we've got a couple of co-ops near us and a couple of small Tesco's Express. When comparing the shops that we've been to recently, the big supermarkets seem to be struggling way more than these small local little shops. So I think when we do need to get something, our plan is gonna to be to go and check Tesco Express and then go to co-op and hopefully we can get what we need. Kind of okay for food and stuff. Um, we're okay for toilet roll. We, we've got quite a few toilet rolls. So yeah, it's just gonna be a case of taking it a day at a time. Um, I think it, it's going to be challenging. I've been very kind of up and down with it. I think because I I struggle with two things. I struggle with low moods, depression and anxiety. Um, they can flare up and go away and come back and go away throughout a period of time. Um, I haven't, I don't know, I can't say I've felt massively anxious about this yet. I've always been a bit of a germaphobe anyway, so it's always completely normal for me to take wipes out with me and to be washing my hands a lot. And so things in that respect haven't really changed a lot for me. Um, I do feel a little bit anxious about getting it, but at the same time, I know that I'm young, fit, and relatively healthy. Um, no, I should say young, healthy, and relatively fit. Um, so I'm not sitting here thinking, okay, if I get it, I'm gonna die. Um, but obviously, it's still a worry. I know from reading some of the symptoms um, that other people have experienced, it's not gonna be fun if you do get it. But I'm also, I don't know, I think I've, my mood has been more low than it's been anxious because it just, I'm someone that I need things happening to kind of keep my mood up, so. I'm someone that plans a lot, I organise a lot, I like to have things in my diary that I know is coming up. I like to know that we're gonna be seeing people at least once a week and, you know, just, you know, doing normal things that help you, that help just perk you up in life. Me and Andy are also people who, I would say we eat out at least once or twice a week, so that's gonna be knocked on the head. Um, that's our kind of, little pick me up sometimes, you know, if we've been working Monday to Thursday on a Friday, we might pop to Wagamama's or Yo Sushi and get a takeaway at the weekend. Um, just had to change my battery pack. So yeah, our habits are gonna change quite a bit, but also, you know, 
I think knocking the day, knocking the habits of sort of going out to eat is actually a good opportunity for us to perhaps lose a few pounds and eat healthy and save some money as well. I think with anything like this, there's always some little silver linings. And I've been saying to my friends and neighbours this week, like, thank God, you know, if this was going to happen, thank God it's happening now as we're going into spring and summer. And actually, we've had two sunny days on the trot at the moment. Um, if this had happened going into winter, knowing that we had just four months of bad weather ahead of us and cold and dark evenings, I think it would have probably hit people a lot harder. But now we have the opportunity to go out in the garden, do some jobs. It just helps, I think, that the sun is shining and we have that opportunity to spend some time outdoors and yeah in the garden doing things last week we actually ordered some new garden furniture which i think we're gonna put together today and i think yeah maybe if you have been saving up for a holiday or hoping to go away or something maybe spend that money on your home in some ways because i think we're probably gonna all be spending a lot of time in our gardens <laughs> so we're very lucky we've got a lovely garden we've got a lovely outlook here we have a hot tub, which I think Andy is going to have to fire up pretty soon so that we can, you know, have afternoon hot tub sessions um, to perk us up. One thing that has kind of depressed me a little bit is the fact that we are supposed to be going to Rhodes in May over our wedding anniversary week. Um, that has been planned for a good six months or so now and we've really been looking forward to it. It's been quite, it's felt like quite a long winter. We've had a lot of wet, dreary days and... I really like going away at the beginning of summer when you haven't really had much sun and you can really appreciate it. So we didn't really want to consider moving the holiday to September, which has been our thought. Um, by September, I'm in wind down. I'm already getting excited for Halloween. Um, so it's not my favourite time to go away. But, you know, we'll just have to do what we have to do. We've not made any decisions about our holiday yet. I think I'm just waiting for more information. I'm waiting for them to say, you know, we're on complete lockdown. You can't travel anywhere. Flights are cancelled. I'm waiting for them to make that decision because I worry that if we start cancelling and rearranging things now, we might not be entitled to a sort of free um, rebooking or whatever. Looking at my flights yesterday with Jet2, I think it's going to cost us about at least 400 pounds to switch our flights to september i think the hotel is fine because it's we we booked it and you can change it up until like a week before so i think the hotel side of it's fine we've not paid out any money on that it's just the flight so ideally if we can it would be nice if they turned around and said you know we'll let you reschedule them for free so i'm just kind of waiting for that but as it stands at the moment, I can't see us being able to go to Greece in May, which is a bit depressing, let's say. It's weird. I hate things being in limbo and it feels like everything is in limbo at the moment. And that is what ends up making me feel personally unsettled is not being able to plan for anything, not having stuff to look forward to, not knowing what's going to happen. I think in a minute I'm just going to do some emails and then we're going to go out into the garden and get our new garden furniture put together which I'm really excited about seeing and then we'll be going out for a dog walk in a bit. So this is what I'm going to try and send to my mum today. Um, it's her Christmas presents from Andy's family which I've been hanging on to because I thought I was going to see her sooner than this and also I've put her Mother's Day bag in there as well so I need to try and find a box that I can put that in and get it to the post office. You ready to go for your walkies? <gasps> are we going to go walkies? We are. Are you ready to go for your walkies? Everyone's ready. We're going to go in a sec. Just looking out the window. It's very bright today. Um, not quite as sunny as yesterday. Quite a lot of cloud, but feels warmer. And there's the girls busy out there. It's so crazy that this whole area now doesn't have grass in it. When you look back to what it looked like before, they've just literally taken all the grass out. Just turn the radio down. I just wanted to say that I never used to be a real radio person. When I worked nine to five in an office, I only used to listen to the radio when I was in my car on the way to work. But now 
I think when you work from home and you are that little bit more isolated, listening to the radio really helps you feel a sense of connection. My favourite radio programmes that I listen to are Vanessa Feltz in the morning on BBC London Radio. Her show is really good and her coverage of coronavirus has been really good and quite grounding as well, I think not kind of stressful and anxiety raising it's been very sort of factual and good topics of conversation and then i usually listen to jeremy vine on bbc radio 2 between 12 and 2 p.m he always talks about really topical things he has callers calling in to share their views and stuff so i always like listening to that it's always very like relevant and topical and then in the afternoon i switch back to bbc london and i listen to joe good's show i think she's on between one and five i want to say um i really like joe good i really like her youtube channel as well go and check her out she's middle-aged minx on YouTube. She's an animal lover. She does a really great show on Thursdays about dogs. So if you're a dog owner, definitely tune into that. And that those shows just kind of keep me going throughout my working day. Um, we just have it on in the background. And yeah, just really enjoy the different topics on there. Let me know below what um, radio shows you're really into. But that's, that's my little radio schedule that I'm into. I feel like such an old person, but <laughs> it's funny when you are working from home and home a lot, and initially I really struggled with it and I found like I really missed out on the you know office conversations and banter and chats in the kitchen and radio especially talk radio does fill a little bit of that gap someone's got who sends the stuff Okay, walk done. Really good long walk, cleared the cobwebs away. Um, I'm just gonna see how many eggs I've got laid today because we're actually having people turning up wanting to buy eggs, which doesn't normally happen. Our neighbors usually buy them, but I, from what I understand, eggs are in high demand. The Tesco's are sold out. So one of our regulars has just said, have we got any eggs? Um, so I'm gonna come and get the eggs and I'll give them to him later. Got three there and one in there today. What just happened, Andy? Egg sales are going through the roof. Literally, people are just turning up, but I've never seen before, just asking for eggs, which is crazy. <coughs> crazy, that is like the second person today to ask us for eggs. People want the eggs, but we only have four chickens and they only lay one egg each a day. So we're lucky if we get a box a day. So we can't keep up with demand, but up production. <laughs> my neighbor down the road, she also has about 10 chickens, I think. So she said to send people down to her if, if they can't get them from us. If anything, if you do eat eggs, if you're watching this and you do eat eggs, um, go rescue some chickens from British Hen Welfare Trust. Go pop your name down for some chickens and you'll have your own eggs. Right, we're in the car. We are going to the post office. <clears throat> Andy's not feeling great. Andy's also got one of those thermometer guns. So every morning he's been um, scanning my head. <laughs> Um, and my temperature has been around 34, 35. We both have, so, although you're starting to question. Yeah, I don't know if that's right, because I thought you were supposed to be like 37, so I don't know if that just doesn't read it as accurate as like a, one that goes in your ear, but good luck getting one of those now. Yeah, I really wanted to buy one of them, but you can't find them anywhere. You could look on Amazon, I don't know. No, no, there's, I've looked. So, like, so we're gonna post our parcel, and then what do we need to get? We need to get the dog some food. Um, I'm out of washing tablets, and... It's just like normal for us though, like. I know, <laughs> that's what I've been saying. It's like not really that much different to the... Today it hasn't really, f it feels weird. Like there's a strange, feeling in the air that's what's weird um and it's i think obviously because sort of, you just know what's going on there's people around in there yeah there's more people around um but yeah it does to us it doesn't really feel that different at the moment but yeah we'll do our little bits now see what the supermarket's looking like and then get home have a cup of tea see what boris has got to say at five o'clock that's going to be the new sort of weekday tradition i think tuning in to see what the latest 
update is. I wonder how long they'll keep that up for. Well, every, they've got to do it every day at the moment. And because we live really close to Stansted Airport, there's literally no planes arriving or taking off. It's really weird. It's so much quieter. too bad in there they were out of toilet roll weren't they yeah everywhere is <coughs> toilet roll and hand sanitizer <laughs> people just need it. to calm down on the toilet roll like we know that you don't get any bum symptoms with this virus <laughs> um but it's now a case of people are just panic buying toilet roll because they're worried they're going to run out of toilet roll and not be able to get it crazy but yeah food's well stocked that's the main thing um as andy said worst comes to the worst can't wipe our bums we'll just go to the toilet and then get in the shower <laughs> male mentality for you right there so andy's just um putting some fuel in the car i don't think there's going to be a fuel crisis but he keeps saying we need to make sure that we've got a car full of fuel so that is what we're doing now parcel delivered a few food bits purchased i've actually seen quite a few elderly people out and about um looks like picking kids up from school and stuff like that a little bit worrying not everyone seems to be following uh boris's advice god i've said it i keep saying it but there's just a really strange feeling everywhere i can't put my finger on it it's just a very i don't know i was hoping that we was going to have time to put the garden furniture together but it's really clouded over now and i think that may be a job we save for tomorrow Oh, the taxi drivers are wearing masks. We've got a packet of anti-back wipes in the car, so whenever we have been going out and getting some bits and whatever, we've been wiping our hands and everything afterwards, wiping the steering wheel. I keep wiping my phone as well, because I just think I'm constantly touching my phone. So, yeah. I think making these daily videos is gonna be good um it's going to give me a little bit of focus during this period and it's also obviously an avenue for making a bit of money obviously i make money from the ad revenue on the videos that i upload so in these times of needs think about your youtube friends think about us content creators and maybe just when you put on my video maybe just let the ads roll and just have me on in the background just with the ads rolling don't skip them because every time you skip that is, that means we don't get paid so i think in these really hard testing times if you're watching any youtube videos maybe um yeah maybe don't skip the ads so we get paid <laughs> that would be a massive help seems as all other work has dried up at the moment so it's four o'clock now um once we get the fuel we're gonna go home put our feet up wait and see what boris has to say yeah that's probably pretty much us done for the day i need to get into a new netflix series or something like that something that's got a lot of series a lot of episodes just little things like that i think can just keep you going during these strange times. System, it is excellent. And the problem is not with the health systems, it's the numbers of, of sufferers.